Hi. Hi. How are you? I know. I just wanted to say I'm having a very emotional day. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm. I, I, they ebb and flow. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I, you know, first of all, you just uh, the daytime Emmys were last weekend, yes. and they, there was a huge tribute to your mother, which was beautiful. Thank you. And uh, but I can't believe she only won an Emmy once. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. She's only uh, never won a primetime Emmy. And the only one she ever won was she won one daytime Emmy. Wow. And, you know, is it a point in her career where the daytime community really embraced her? Mm -hmm. And she was so loved by that whole group. And to walk yeah. out and have so many of the producers and all these people that she's worked with for all those years be there and yeah. stand up yeah. was a very emotional moment. It's a very strong community. I also feel very embraced by the daytime community and have been very blessed by, you know, everything. So yeah. it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. And I think she would have liked the dress, except it was way too conservative uh, really? for her taste. I mean, for right. her, she would have wanted me, which I talk about in the book, you know, everything hanging out, yeah. nothing to the imagination. You had very different tastes in, in uh, the way you, you dress. Like for her birthday, probably Jasmine's look would have been really good, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That would have been, yes. you know. <laughs> she knew what to do for her mother for her birthday. She knew. Um, <laughs> so it's a really sweet book, and uh, it's, uh, it's a tragedy that you had to write this book uh, in the first place. Mm -hmm. But it must have been bittersweet, because there's, uh, there are amazing stories in here that uh, make you laugh. And, and how, was it, how tough was this to write? Um, it was tough, but my mother, um, <laughs> she always had this joke that she wanted to write a book with me before she died called Comedian Dearest. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know where this is going. Yeah. So that it would be in the safety deposit box, so she would say once her head hit the floor, I could just publish it right away. Right. Um, so I wanted to write something that would make me laugh and would make her laugh and would make her fans laugh. And I think I set the tone with the dedication, mm -hmm. which is for my mother, whom I think about every day, and to my father, who as of this past September is no longer resting in peace. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, that's, that sets the tone for the book. But it was cathartic. It was yeah. very, I wanted to call it cheaper than therapy. Yeah. But you say, I mean, she jokes saying comedian dearest, but she was a great mother to you, yes. even though um, she gave you advice on uh, how <laughs> to be a good mother, which I thought was interesting. She was always self-deprecating anyway. Yes. But, but tell people what she said. Oh, there, there were lots of things yeah. she said. Um, she always just said that I was actually a better mother than for Cooper than she was for me, mm -hmm. which on the surface sounds like a compliment. Mm -hmm. But then you stop her and you go, like, wait a minute, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. If I'm doing so much of a better job, like, do I need to go lay down? Uh -huh. I'm a little worried about that. Yeah. But, you know, she was, uh, she's funny. And, yeah. You know, she lived for my son. Yeah, Cooper is how old, 14? He's 14. Wow. And I know they were very, very close. Very close. He's 14 now. Um, it was a big, big blow to him. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he's a teenager, so sometimes he actually looks up from the phone and I see his eyes and I can see if he's happy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, my mom, she was it's so funny because when I was growing up and my parents would come to every game and it turned out that my mother used to actually be asleep behind her sunglasses <laughs> and never learned anything about sports. Uh -huh. And with Cooper, she would actually like, she had her chair like that she would carry to the games and the practices and she would actually stay awake and sometimes she even knew which team scored. So, wow. you know, she really loved it. So she went to Cooper's games and was she... Uh, well, she went dressed like that. I was gonna say. Yeah, how she always went in full hair and makeup and I used to call her like, it was like Johnny Cash. She would always be all in black and heels and the whole thing. Because she was always, her, her thing was, I don't need some snotty eighth grader going home to his parents and say, I saw Joan Rivers and she looks like crap. <laughs> <laughs> she was dressing for the eighth she graders. She was dress, dressing for the drag, well, Santa Monica Dragons eighth grade lacrosse team. Uh, hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. I want to read this. I mean, her jokes are just timeless. And I, they, I think it was, was it the 60 Minutes piece where she showed the filing cabinet of all the jokes that she's kept over the years? And, well, I remember that yes. piece. I mean, she's just got so many jokes, but, and they just stand up. My love life is like a, p a piece of Swiss cheese. Most of it is missing in what's there stinks. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, looking 50 is great if you're 60. Um, <laughs> my best birth control now is just leave the lights on. <laughs> the first time I see a jogger smiling, I'll consider it. Uh, I hate housework. You make the beds, you do the dishes, and six months later, you have to do it all again. Um, just really great. And, and sweet stories, and, and uh, she, she really was a pioneer and uh, an amazing, amazing woman. And uh, you're in here. I know, I know. I was flattered to, to see that. that that's so sweet. And um, 
she was very supportive of me. So yes. um, she was an amazing woman, and uh, we are sad that she's not with us anymore. I'm so glad you wrote the book. It is called The Book of Joan, and it's available starting tomorrow.